But listen, we were talking about Mr. Moran's question, which was how you engage in this. I mean, now, first of all, Rita pointed out during the break, I think, a very important and sensitive question. You're a licensed funeral director, so you know, licensed undertaker, Leela. Although, what do you do now professionally? You're a writer? I'm a, professional, I'm a freelance writer and artist now. Professional freelance writer and artist. Yes. And you do make a full-time living doing yes. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know as a licensed undertaker, and just as a human being with some sensitivity, I'm sure, that we make rituals about death. I mean, all societies and cultures do it. We don't mummify our dead the way the Egyptians did, but we have our own rituals and ceremonies. And I think the rituals and ceremonies, if not important to the dead, certainly are important to the living. To the living only. Yeah, I rather doubt that my grandmother, who passed away several years ago, really cared for the ritual, because at that point, at the age of 99, she couldn't have known or cared. And if she's on the other side, her spirit will communicate with us, but the flesh no longer matters. But you're offending the living. I mean, you're going into mausoleums. What about what you do to offend and to hurt the living who feel now that if you're going secretly into mausoleums, you're violating their loved ones? What do you, laid to rest. What, do you, Perhaps, what do you term violation, first of all? Well, let me interpolate. Perhaps it would be best Please, if she sure. should uh, tell us what it isn't first, what necrophiles do not do that people may in the popular right, I think imagination. I, ought stress, I think I ought to stress a point here. Yeah. We do not advocate necrophilia as merely a sexual tool for those who cannot cut it with the living. You're not proselytizing, are you? In other words, you're not seeking converts, are you? No, we're not forcing our ways upon anyone. We are out there for those who have no place to go, who have been this way as long as they've been this way, and fought themselves because of it. We are offering them an outlet through which they can correspond and get closer to their own feelings but by now feeling. but you're going into the mausoleum i don't care what you do in the mausoleum dear you're in the mausoleum right Rita? everybody who has their loved ones in a mausoleum I right now ones in a mausoleum. who is listening yes. is thinking my god i hope it isn't ours but what are you talking what is so terrible about going into a mausoleum tell me that what do you fear why do they I'm put going locks do? on the doors what do you fear that i'm going to do in the why mausoleum? why do they, they put locks on the doors what do you fear that I'm going to do? It Violating upon, no, privacy. What do you do? It to violate privacy. It yes. depends upon privacy. what the, the, the belief and the background of the person is that has the mausoleum. Quite honestly, if you were asking me personally, all right, I could make the joke and say, well, you're a very attractive young lady and you can do anything in my mausoleum you damn well please. But on the other hand, my general attitude towards life and death is once I'm dead, I don't care if they put my head into a, uh, into a pencil sharpener and pound me into the ground. It doesn't make any difference. Exactly. We agree, but exactly. we're talking about but the living. Unfortunately, the living. there are the people, okay, who have a feeling, okay, about the dead that I don't have, okay? Uh, they don't have, uh, they feel that, that, that there is something in the body after the person dies that is still their, their husband, their wife, their mother, their father, their child. And in a situation like that, the individual uh, would probably be very, very hurt to think that someone who was not uh, a welcomed guest uh, was present in in a mausoleum. Just my presence would upset them. Doing. Yes. yes, to some Just sure. my presence. Sure. I think so. There's nothing I can do about my presence there. I don't see anything wrong with that. First uh, of all, what do you do once you enter? I don't the mausoleum? do anything irreverent. No, no. Some people would suggest just by being in the mausoleum with the purpose of loving the dead or having a sexual relationship with the dead, you are doing something disrespectful number or one, irreverent. If number not one. Number one. Please. Number one. There is no actual intercourse. Number one. Let me get for that. some necrophiles there is. For some necrophiles there is. Not for you. Not for me personally, because I believe it is a corruption of the dead. Okay. All right. What do you do once you're in the mausoleum? Well, have you ever been to an necromancy ceremony? Let me put it to you that way. Any of you? Happily, I'm familiar with them, but I have not attended. All right. Well, the basic principle of necromancy is seducing the corpse in order that the spirit may come through it. The spirit of yes. death, if you will, may yes. come through it. That's basically. Yeah, there are metaphysical. Connections. Metaphysical. Yes. That's basically what I do. Could you be more specific? Everything but intercourse, okay? Do you touch the body? Yes. Do you caress the body? Yes. Do you kiss the body? Yes. All right. I think I just answered it when I answered Mr. Moran's question. To what end? Are you asking? Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't understand. Towards what purpose? Towards what purpose? 
Do I do this? Yes. Do. She had mentioned about I the mentioned angel it of to death. I seduce and, uh, the corpse so the angel of death will come through to me. What about sexual arousal? What about sexual arousal? Is there? Of course. There, if there wasn't, I wouldn't be there. I, if there was no arousal, it would... <laughs> okay. What? It would have to be arousing in order for you to be there. Is the arousal for its own sake, or is it part of the, the magical it's part ceremony of the magic, to get it's energy? It's part of the so-called psychic ceremony, if you will. Okay. It's not just love of the corpse itself. Do you I, enter I'm alone? joining late, so maybe I'm repeating what's been repeated, but are these people that are dead that you're having sex with people not that... Not sex. Okay, the people making that are dead that you're to. seducing okay. are making I like love Joel's to. Word are they people who consented to this prior to their death? No, I most of them. She does I didn't not know, know any of them. No. Okay. No. Uh, no. I'm a sex therapist. I see people with with many types of uh, things that other people would condemn them for. My own feeling is that if people are doing things that make them happy, where no person is getting exploited, where yes. somebody isn't being forced to do something. In other words, if you want to beat somebody who likes being beaten, I think that's yeah. a wonderful thing mm -hmm. if the two of you find each other. Yeah, However, the, the, the major agree. issue yeah. be the first to agree with the that. major issue for me is one of uh, one of consent. If you were beating somebody who didn't want to be beat up, I think that would be a that would be a problem, and we'd mm. change there from a variation. I would enjoy doing that. To, no. And that would be if you were beating somebody up who didn't want to be beat up. We wouldn't be talking about a sexual variation. We'd be talking about a crime. That's right. right. Here they right. get okay. a certain pleasure from pain, but it's between consenting adults. It does not go beyond what consenting adults agree to. Right, right. And, and in, in, in right, this situation, right. the thing is perfectly that, acceptable. The thing that troubles me about what you're saying is the, or what you're doing, is the lack of consent that's involved. I think Did it anybody would be, say no, though? Well, I don't know whether no people, I think people, I think no people longer a do. person. Remember, the spirit of the person is long departed. The that's spirit the, of the individual your, most is long of departed. Us, most of us would I don't know, some people would agree with that. I think most people most would tend people to would agree, agree with that. I've made provisions for after my death to have my body given uh, want first to anybody who wants an organ or needs something for a transplant after so that. So you know for your personality scientific or your spirit is not there anymore. Right, yeah, after yeah, that, I, I scientific expect, study and, and, yeah. and dissection. I expect and to be cremated and I still believe the spirit will rise and that the body doesn't mean anything. I mean, if and you knew that your that spirit was still in there, so you wouldn't the, cremate yourself. However, those, are the three, <clears throat> those are the three steps I have for myself. I believe that my body is my body and that then if somebody decided, if you decided that wasn't okay for me to be dissected like I would like to be for medical science and instead it would be better for me to be buried, that that would be a violation of, of my rights. Would, Besides would, would which, you we're, agree? Dealing with, we're dealing we're, with a situation now, I don't, you know, and, and then to, to, yeah, let, me, let me just yeah, sure finish thing. through this one yeah. point, that what that would time? be a violation of my rights if, if I suggested to but you, I have let's no say, say, as a funeral what, director. But I what happens to your body. But as a funeral director, if I made provisions with you and said, I want to be cremated, you and you decided cremated. it would be better if you got buried, that wouldn't no, be okay, that has right? No, I am not talking at all I about that. What your provisions are, are your own business. Okay, Please. so if what I'm saying is you. what I would like for my body is to have it put in a drawer where nobody's going to touch it, mm -hmm. And I think when we think about being placed in a mausoleum, I don't think about being put in a mausoleum where I would be being touched. I think fondled. about it uh, or fondled. I think of it well, as a place where I. Well, how would you feel if I you knew this would happen? Would you still put yourself in a mausoleum, even though even though you know your spirit's I not there I wouldn't put myself longer. in a mausoleum anyway because well, it seems like you know. a waste. Of, would. Of, assuming of, you would, assuming you would. Mausoleums cost. Probably more than houses. Do All right, today. mausoleum, yeah. grave. Well, that's getting Doesn't off on a sound okay. yeah. That's right. something else yeah. altogether. I'm, I'm trying to make a point, though. Okay. A place where there are keys, all right, that, that there's a door to be opened, all right, something like that costs money. People have spent a lot of money to secure their body behind the locked door. And they haven't spent the that door. money to secure the body. They've spent that money to make a monument that of I course. am. Which means so that they have. Oh, I, I, I don't know that we can, good, we can assume means, that. I think a lot of people are ten. afraid, for instance, they will go to yeah. a mausoleum because they're afraid to have their body in the ground. In the ground. Most people uh, who have mausoleums are afraid yes. of the thought of being in the ground. And what has that got to do with necrophilia? Well, the issue that I'm trying to make is, okay, that those people that I know personally that own mausoleums, okay, have a preoccupation with what's going to happen to their body 
after they die. Obviously, I'm not interested in having a mausoleum. I have better things to do with my money than to build an edifice to shove my body into, okay? Because as I said, I don't care what they do with my body when, exactly. when I'm right finished Exactly, right there, right okay? there, you just answered your own question. But the issue is that the people who are building these mausoleums are very concerned what's going to happen to their body. They don't want their body cremated, they don't want their body put into the ground. They are being very, very they specific. They don't want organ transplants. Exactly. No. At no. The same, and now what we're saying no. is, okay, fine, but it's all right to go in and fondle the body. Which maybe they don't want either. Well, I believe on some occasions the bodies have responded to you, haven't they? Well, nobody act, nobody believes me when I say that. The bodies have responded to uh, you. Let me just re-identify. WBAB, the queen of the necrophiles and the king of the sadomasochists. <laughs> Rick Moran and Rita Allen, John Connolly joining me tonight. Please, the bodies have responded to you. All right, we're, a place I used to work in... Leela, please. I worked with a man who was a psychic photographer, I guess you'd call him. He took pictures of all kinds of psychic phenomena and uh, he used to have an observation window and he used to comment that the bodies used to respond to me being there which nobody ever believed but it is true they used to not just move because of muscle contractions but long after they've been dead sit up move look at me turn around follow me around so forth and so on all kinds of little maneuvers like that this is true this has actually happened there have been quite a few witnesses to it and whether you believe me or not I don't care because I don't care anymore. It has happened, and that's that. I really believe that you believe that. I'm even open to maybe that that happened. <laughs> I'm open to that it's okay to have sex with anybody who Here says it's okay to have sex with you, love. even if they're dead, or to make love to anybody who you want to make love to, even if they're dead, as long as you do it with that person's permission. But how would you get the permission of it's, a corpse? It's very difficult, I think, to get the permission of a corpse. Next that's kin. why it seems to me that but you don't you understand. Could, I have you could secure that permission, permission before, right, before, they die. before they die. And I think you might find people, maybe through, is it Mr. Mr. E. Mr. E's agency? It sounds like possibly through Mr. E's but agency. But I think you, you missed a lot of our group people of people who would love to be seduced in, after in their death. No, no, you missed this. the beginning yeah. of the program where I was explaining that the angel of death uses the corpse to come through to me. More uh -huh. or less, I have his permission. For how long do you stay in that mausoleum? Whatever different, the Differing is. times. No minutes, point. hours, days? No differing times. Could be five minutes, could be a night, a day, whatever. Have you ever been caught in there by a oh, long time police ago. or a security long time guard? Ago. Mm -hmm. With what repercussion? Not really any. Did they ask you what you were doing? A couple of times they threw me out, but uh, they asked me what am I doing there. They said, just don't take anything. <laughs> that you never do? No. You don't take jewelry or any of no. the. Some people walk goods around stealing skulls. No, I don't. That's do that. not for you? No. Mm -mm. Uh huh. And. Uh, you do this at cemeteries throughout Long Island? In other parts. Other parts of the country mm -hmm. as well, but you don't go alone. Do oh, you ever yes. go in alone? Oh, surely. Most of the time I am alone, but I have gone with other people, too. Mr. Moran. Merely because I wanted someone there to witness this being's coming out. What percentage of the time um, that you make love to a corpse does the specter of the angel of death come to you? 75% of the time. Does it always look the same? Yes. What What is there about it that makes you not think that you have created it yourself out of your own mind? Because other people have seen it. That no, wouldn't, it right, that wouldn't necessarily mean that that isn't what happened. Is it possible? Can other people see my fantasies? If you believe it strong enough and if you put enough psychic energy into it, sometimes yes. Well, what about... But that still doing. makes it a psychic matter, an ESP matter. But it, it is not something that exists independently. What about all the I'm accounts right. of pre-biblical times and zillions and yeah. zillions of accounts before I ever came onto the earth? Well, do you see anything different You're between... following the pattern. She didn't. I, I didn't know about it until I researched that. it because I had seen it first. I wanted to know okay, what it but, was. But do you see any difference between what you are seeing and feeling and what people uh, see and feel when they practice <coughs> different forms of witchcraft. I don't I, quite understand oh, okay. the question. I, I've done a great deal of research, <laughs> as Mr. E knows, in this field. That's how I first met him. Um, when people in certain um, cults okay, mm -hmm. practice different versions of what we call in the Western world witchcraft, uh, some of those cults, their aim is to bring forth a specter. Now, now basically, mm -hmm. you're doing the same thing. And the the oldest the oldest line in 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 the history of witchcraft is, witches' covens are usually formed 
among people, all of whom said, it's such a relief to know that there are other people who've had the same type of uh, experience, that have the same type of beliefs. No one ever taught me this, but yet here are 13 people or 20 people or 10 people or whatever that, that know what I know without being taught it. So basically you're telling me the same thing. They, what I'm interested in, okay, is uh, I'm not trying to pry into, you know, into your personal relationships with... I'm trying to understand with, what you're with, saying. Okay, I'm not trying to, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, to look into your personal relationships with, with, you know, a corpse. What I'm trying to figure out is what it is that you might be doing to, um, to key a reaction, to key a response, which then causes the specter to appear. That I cannot answer because I do not know why he has chosen to come through to me.